Hello everyone, this is Oshini from Chinta.com. Today, we have a very beautiful problem from ISI BSTAT BMAT entrance. But this problem is also useful if you're preparing for IOQM, American Math competitions and so on. Because using this problem, we will learn a couple of very important strategies in solving algebra problems. The first one is the secret weapon of complex numbers. So, for example, if you look at this problem where you want to show that this expression is divisible by this expression, just by looking at these expressions, you cannot say that if you use complex numbers, you can get a very elegant solution. So, just by looking at them, it's not evident. But I will show you how. And you can use the same strategy in other places. And then, we also have a very interesting and useful formula theorem from algebra, which is known as the factor theorem. This is very useful for mathematical Olympiads as well. So we will talk about these two central ideas. We will use this problem to learn these two ideas. And also, as usual, we will have a challenge problem for you to try out if you can do it. There is a little award waiting for you. So welcome to the community. We discuss everything mathematics here. If you're interested in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiad, computer science Olympiads, or ISI CMI entrances or research, check the link in the description. Hundreds of students at Chinta are working on these things. They're very hard working. You can join the club. You're most welcome. Okay. All right. So let's get started with this problem. It says that x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. We want to show that this is divisible by x squared plus x plus 1. Well, you can actually start by dividing it like a long division and the problem will be done. Of course, after doing a hundred, several steps, you will be able to do this completely divided. Okay, so yeah. So number one, the number one method, the sort of the hard or the long method is to use long division. So I want you to actually try this. Uh, check. How many steps? How many steps are needed to complete the division process? And this is the challenge one, the first challenge of today. Make sure to complete all the challenges. The first challenge for today is how many steps are there to in this particular long division process? Okay. But we will not use long division. We will instead use complex numbers. So maybe you are familiar with something called complex cube roots of unity. Okay, so this is a very important topic. What it says is that if you have an equation x cube minus 1 equal to 0, then there are three solutions to this equation. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. Whatever is the highest power of x, you have that many roots or zeros, real or complex, that satisfies that equation. So in this case, the highest power of x is 3. Highest power of x is 3. So you will have three solutions. Now, of course, one of the solutions is a real solution, which is x equals to 1. The other two solutions, we call them omega and omega square. Now we discussed this quite carefully in our Math Olympiad program as well as ISI CMI entrance program. But if you are new to this, I'll give you the first step of de deducing omega and omega square. And it's very simple. What you do is you factorize this thing. So this is x minus 1 times x square plus x plus 1. So x is equal to 1 is of course 1 root. The other factor, x squared plus x plus 1, is equal to 0. 
when you can now find this a quadratic equation you can find the roots of this equation so you can find the two roots of this equation and we call one of them omega and you can check the other one is just square of that so we call it omega square the good news is this number omega which is a complex number and this is challenge to find out what is omega and put it in the comment section this number omega when it is cubed will produce one of course it's a cube root of unity it will satisfy this original equation so if you plug in x equals to omega you will get one that is actually a good way to find out other powers of omega for example if i wanted to find out omega to the power 7 i would just isolate as many cubes as possible and change them to one and i'll be left out with just a few omegas so omega to the power 7 is omega cube times omega cube times omega now this is one this is one so we are left out with omega so this is equal to omega let's say that's a brief calculation using omegas omega omega square and so on all right how is this useful but it's useful because x squared plus x plus one factors as x minus omega and x minus omega square you can factorize it this comes from various directions but we always use the factor theorem to talk about this because well that will be useful in the next step as well so what is the factor theorem well it says that if p of x is a polynomial polynomial and if x equals to a if you plug in x equals to a that is calculate p of a to be equal to zero then then x minus a is a factor of p of x so you can write p of x as x minus a times q of x there are actually this is not the complete statement there are actually other little nuances about coefficients of the polynomial and so on i'm not going to go into those but you should definitely look up the factor theorem so it's a very powerful theorem by the way all right so now we are going to use the factor theorem what we will do is we know that x minus omega times x minus omega square is equal to x square plus x plus 1. We would plug in these roots and check if the same roots work for this thing, the original expression. That is, if I plug in x equals to omega, does this become 0? If this becomes 0, if I plug in x equals to omega, this becomes 0, then x minus omega is a factor of this expression by factor theorem. Similarly, if I plug in x equals to omega squared, then x minus omega squared would be a factor of this expression. Finally, I would be able to say that x minus omega times x minus omega squared is a factor of this expression, which would mean that this is a factor of this expression. Because x minus omega and x minus omega square, when multiplied, gives me this, right? So, I separately calculate for omega and omega square and check if this becomes zero or not, okay? All right, so let's try that. So, x square, x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. If I plug in x equals to omega, I get omega to the power 10 plus omega to the power 5 plus 1. I know I, ha I have to extract omega cubes because those will become 1 and just I can write them off, right? So this becomes omega cube times omega cube times omega cube times omega. So omega to the power 9 times omega. I'm just writing it down in a minute. I like breaking it down a little bit for if someone is new, have not done these calculations before, it will be easier for that person. And this omega to the power 5 is omega cube times omega square plus 1. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So what we had, we have omega plus omega square plus 1. But we know that that is equal to 0 because omega is a root of this 
So if I plug in x equals to omega, I get omega square plus omega plus 1 equal to 0. That is the meaning of the word that omega is a root of this particular expression. It means that if you replace x by omega, the left hand side becomes 0. So omega squared plus omega plus 1 is 0, which is exactly what we have here. Omega squared plus omega plus 1, that is equal to 0. So what we found is just by plugging in omega, I could make x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1, 0. So x minus omega is a factor of x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. This is by factor theorem. So you see how complex numbers and factor theorem are coming into place and we are using this together to work on this problem. As a last challenge, this is the final challenge. Plug in omega equals to omega, x equals to omega square. And can you show the calculation and check if it is also zero? So give it a try. I think you will learn a lot by doing this one problem. It's extremely important that you do a ton of problems regularly. If you are an internal student of Chinta, I urge you to attend all the problem solving classes like five of them if you are in India, four of them if you are in US or North America. Students who have regularly attended problem solving sessions day after day, month after month, year after year, you can check they have done wonderfully in these contests. So make sure that you do problems every day, exciting non-routine problems, okay? All the best. I'll see you in the next video. Keep on doing good mathematics, good physics, good computer science. Apply your mind and I will see you in the next one. Right.